Okay, here I have a very dirty, rusty old Amstrad computer. This is a PC 1512DD. DD probably means double disk drive. It's got the two floppies in it. I actually pulled this to bits already, but I thought it might be interesting to have a look. It's in pretty poor condition. I think these came out around 1986. I think there's something on the board about it. Looks like they had some sort of backup batteries, just normal AA, AAA type battery set up there. And we've just got a plastic case, it's just got a connector to the battery on it. And of course two floppy drives in here. Big heavy old ones they are, with a bit of extra metal case around them. I might even pull one of those out and have a look. I don't know if they're just a standard type drive other computers used or not. At least these are standard sort of, that one's actually still got part of a, well it's actually a three and a quarter floppy something that's shoved in there so that wasn't very bright. But at least I think the later, those CPC 464 or whatever, little Amstrad computers had their own type of floppy drive. It wasn't a three and a quarter or something similar, but it was actually um, only an Amstrad standard thing. A little speaker in there, and under all this rusty old shielding, we've got our main board. And the other thing you might notice about this is that it just has a motherboard oh there it is amstrad 1986 copyright so it is around that era but it's just got a main board and a couple of floppy drives there's no power supply in this because these are actually powered off the the monitor and i do have the old uh, monochrome monitor to go with this one so i can have a quick look at that but rather than put a power supply in these that to save costs they build it in with the the circuit board on the monitor which actually makes quite a lot of sense since you've already got sort of power electronics in the monitor. So that must have been one of these connectors. It's got this great big moldy pin connector there. And I guess we should have a look at the back of this thing. What does it say? We've got DC in and video out. So that massive big connector is DC in. Probably most of those pins will be wired together, I guess. Looks like they are, yes. Yeah, so I think there's 12 volts for the floppy drives, 5 volt for the, the main board for all the chips on it. And yeah, that's probably it, I guess. Probably multiple pins to put the power across. And we've got a parallel printer port, an old DB25, and a serial interface on the other 25 pinner. And on the side of it, we have a yeah, keyboard, volume control, and mouse. So it's a 9 pin mouse, DB9 type. Not sure if that's a standard keyboard. I think the standard ones were 5 pin DIN that looks like a 6 pin, so it's probably proprietary or something. And that pot seems to be seized. And there was a little plastic knob here that went through the case. Yeah, that's rusted solid. God, I'm surprised you're going to. I think there's a, maybe the grease has just gone on it. It is starting to move a little bit. So basically this is what the motherboard looks like there, that's the wiring harness for the floppy drives and there's their power. So that would be the, it looked pretty standard with two earthers in the middle, one is 12 volt, one is 5 volt. So I reckon they would be standard drives but you never know with Amstrad. And there's our processor, 8086-2, made by Fujitsu, copyright 81, Intel copyright 78. So it is actually a standard sort of processor. Got some Amstrad chips in here. Something made in Japan there. Yeah, they're all Japanese big chips. We've got a Zilog who made the Z80 processors. But I think that's a Z80. It's not sure what that chip is. Most of the others look like standard sort of TTL chips. We've got Looks like a bank of memory here, which are D41256s, NEC made chips, and looks like you've got a couple of sets of sockets to expand the RAM, so I don't know if that means it's got 256k of RAM, it probably wouldn't have been much more than that, probably expandable to 512 or something. A couple of Amstrad chips there are 4043, 4044, 
that says system ROM 4044 and system ROM 404043 so they must be the ROMs with their own software in it not sure what that chip is it's another Intel chip MBL 8259A no idea what that is either it's got expansion slots so it was made to have like the standard cards looks like there's another socket next to the processor it could have been for a co-processor or something so it's not a completely um, useless computer was this a VDU ROM 40045 those chips are probably still good in these they might be good to someone for something but it looks like it's a reasonably IBM compatible type computer I think these did run all the IBM type software but I could be wrong about that and that's the underside of the board, not a single jumper or anything, so they must have got those pretty right. But yeah, that's that's what's inside that. I might have a quick look at one of these drives. Let's see if there's anything interesting about it. I doubt these ones are any good anymore. They've been out in the weather a bit. So this thing is pretty much ready for the e-waste but I thought it'd be interesting to have a look inside one of these I don't think I've actually pulled one of these Amstrads to bits I've done just about every brand of computer old Olivetti's and Osborne's and all sorts of stuff IBM's and whatever but never one of these so yeah it's pretty grotty in there is there any markings on this thing? Yeah, it actually says Amstrad part number 40046 so the boards at least are probably Amstrad it's actually belt driven my god I don't think that's normal is it so long since I pulled a floppy drive to bits I can't remember but I don't remember it's like a cassette player motor in there almost I always thought these were some sort of direct drive with a sort of servo motor underneath I could be wrong but knowing Amstrad they probably came up with a cheaper way to to do it nothing there on the back that means anything to me as far as serial number that's so maybe these are Amstrad actual design things I don't know if I can get that bit of floppy disk out of there there we go EXP yeah that's definitely a one point Four, four floppy one of it. Don't know why someone tried to shove one of those in there? Probably a kid or something. So I assume that other drive is going to be the same. To be fair, the heads in these look pretty good still, but there is quite a bit of corrosion on them, so probably not even worth salvaging for any parts, but. Someone out there might be able to use some of this stuff. But otherwise they can just be tossed in the scrap metal since they're mostly die cast aluminium. Looks like basically the same thing. And a couple of Sony chips and bits and pieces. Again the old belts are pretty stuck to the thing a bit and that bearing's pretty well not good not good at all but a bit of lubrication probably get that going again they, yeah they're definitely a stepper motor by the feel of it so not quite just a cassette player motor but yeah I think I can't remember yeah I think stepper motors were standard sort of thing to use in them but I don't think they I think they normally were more direct drive than this but I could be wrong, it's been a long time since I pulled a floppy apart. No, to be fair, it's only got four wires, so is that a stepper motor? It feels like one. Maybe that's the idea, maybe it is some standard DC motor that's meant to feel like a stepper motor or something. Very odd. Yeah, just 
the usual. I'll put the disc in the clamp. I haven't even got a floppy disk. And yeah, a couple of optical sensors, I think, to know whether a disc in there or not. And then, then we've got the head motor there. Drives the heads back and forwards. Oh, yeah, we've got a little drive select jumper by the look of it. So these should be on different ones. And it's zero, and that's one. I think these were just 360k floppy drives and these things. I guess having two of them made it easier to copy things over or something. Or maybe I guess if you wanted to keep two bits of software semi-loaded up. But yeah, I, don't, I think these are quite a cheap system. Much more accessible price-wise for people. So I'll have a look at the monitor as well, even though the cords have been cut off that. Here it is. It is a... It's a tube PCMM, it's got written on the front of it, Amstrad, just a, I don't know if it's a green screen or an amber screen, it's got a Ryan tube, I think a lot of Amstrad stuff, their monitors were made by Ryan, or at least had a Ryan tubes in them, I think I remember the colour monitors did, so I pulled a lot of those apart to use in TV sets. Yeah, unfortunately the model number's missing off the back of it. So it's got that label on the back. But the idea of these, like I say, unfortunately someone, the scrapper or something's taken the leads off this. So that's where our power came in. And that was the signal cable. And I already unplugged this. This is the power. This went back down to the computer. So despite that big connector on the computer, we've really got just two positives. And a few earths, I'm guessing, with the black ones. And this orange wire, which is probably a 12 volts for the floppy drives or something. I think one of those floppy connectors had an orange wire on it. Yes, it did. And it's got this other little four pin connector, so I guess that accounts for a few more pins. But yeah, that's just been cut off at the back of the computer. And yeah, there's really two big black wires. Two big red ones, the orange and those other few bits and pieces. And that used to plug in somewhere in here, down the front. So we've got a switch mode power supply here. That's the main chip that runs the thing, an STK7358 on the 240 volt side. So 240 comes in through a power switch. Filter cap, obviously a bridge rectifier somewhere, into that chip. Main chopper transformer there. And then we've got these heat sinks. That might just be something to do with the... No, I think that is all power supply, because it's a horizontal output over here. So I've got some quite large diodes in like TO220 flat pack cases. And that'd be to both run the monitor itself. Which may well, being a monochrome, it probably runs off 12 volts anyway. Or thereabouts. So they could probably use that same 12 volt rail for this and for the floppy drive and other stuff in the computer. And then there'd be one or two of these diodes running big 5 volt rails. I could probably tell from the filter caps on the other side we've got a 3300 mic 16 volt cap. Probably a couple of them, 16 1000. Let's see if I can get to see what that other big one is. 3335 volts, so there's nothing really super low voltages you'd expect with a 5 volt rail and unfortunately they haven't labelled it the connector that went to the computer by look at it so I don't know quite a few trim pots down the front here none of them labelled so that's pretty annoying I don't know whether Orion made these whole boards but they could be Ryan's or something like that Look at the way they set up there, something like that sort of thing. I don't know if the underside's got any labels. Let's get that board out. I don't know how she's out. And no, I can't see. Can't see any labels on the connector, which is annoying. It'd be nice if they labelled the 5 and 12 volts. Yeah, none of the pots have any labels on them, which is really annoying. But yeah, 
that's the little the insides of the monitor. I probably could power this thing up and see if I could actually get a image out of the tube. Don't really see why not. It doesn't look like it's it's a bit corroded, but not overly bad. I wouldn't be surprised if it still actually worked. There might be a little bit of rusty stuff down there I should get rid of. I reckon all the pots, well, the pots actually work alright, I would have thought they'd be shot. So I could actually plug, fire this thing up and just see what it does. Assuming that it runs with no computer plugged into it. I don't know that it would have any reason not to. Which is a bit dicky. There is some corrosion around the edges, but I would like to know what sort of phosphor this thing has, but whether it gives any sort of image without a um, computer connected, it's pretty unlikely it will. Strip this wire off. Okay, well, I haven't tested anything, haven't changed any caps or anything. Just going to plug this in and see what happens. It may go bang, it made a funny noise, and then stopped. Actually, that's running, I think. I can still hear it running. It's making some sort of noise. Turn it off, it's still making a buzzing noise. No sign of any rust on the screen. They must be the brightness and brightness connections. Yeah, brightness and contrast. So I'll turn them flat out. I don't think with any with no signal feeding it, it's not gonna do a lot. But I can hear the deflection running. So we've got vertical deflection, and it makes a funny noise. The problem is it's got no load on the switch mode from the computer, and no signal into the monitor, so it's possible it's going into some sort of shutdown mode because of that. But, like I said, it didn't go bang, and I wouldn't be surprised if it actually works. Oh, I've got something written on the side, what does that say? Block number something. No, nothing of value. So yeah, because we've got no, no sync signals coming in, and no load on the power supply from the motherboard. If I was really game, I could plug the the motherboard in as well I guess but I don't think there's much point applying power to that in that condition and yeah basically this thing's only good for parts at best I don't really have a use for this monitor so it may end up in the e-waste yet but um, it's kind of tempting to keep it just for the, the phosphor I don't think I have, I've got a black and white portable somewhere, I think I do I might even if see if I can, is it a 12 or 14 inch this tube? I think it's actually a 14, but and of course the tube number's vanished as well. The water's got to it, or can I read that still? Nah. I honestly can't tell if that's does look a lot like a 14 rather than a 12, but even then you could hook this up into a TV set. Probably got the same pin out. It's got Amstrad written on the board there, so that's definitely made for Amstrad. Whether Orion made the electronics or not, I don't know. But yeah, no tube number, I'll have to measure the diagonal. But it would be interesting, I'd love to see a green screen or amber screen again. These could have amber in them. But amber was pretty rare, so maybe not. But anyway, I thought it would be worth just having a quick look inside this thing. 
see what they're made out of. Kind of an innovative design having the power supply built into this. So you can see there's, there's no fan in it. Probably no need for one because it's all out in the open and like a normal TV set the heat can just sort of circulate and go out through the vents. And yeah, save so quite a bit of um, extra circuitry and stuff building a whole power supply which probably then needs a fan because it's enclosing the computer instead of that they just put it in here with a normal power supply it's all part of the same switch mode transformer which actually makes quite a lot of sense not a bad cost saving thing but of course it means you're stuck with an Amstrad monitor which is good for them I guess because they get to that's actually got a Ryan on the yoke so they made that as well but anyway yeah so they got to sell you a monitor along with a computer you couldn't just buy any aftermarket one or use one you already had and yeah, if the monitor failed or you didn't have it, um, you can't really run the computer without it. So that was a bit of a pain. Um, so yeah, and same with yeah, basically the box. If the monitor failed, the box was no good. You couldn't just plug it into a PowerPoint and use it with a different monitor. And I guess yeah, if the the box failed, you, this monitor was basically useless as well, unless you had a Amstrad box to run it with. So not the best idea, but as far as yeah, just keeping the cost down for people that just wanted a budget system, that would have helped a lot, and probably got some people into computers who couldn't otherwise afford them, to buy the whole separate box and separate monitor and all the rest, because they were super expensive back in the day. And these systems, I think, came in at a pretty good price, given that it was an IBM compatible. As far as I know, as I'm pretty sure it could run the same software, which was one of their big selling points. And um, yeah, they'd, they'd do the job as an IBM compatible at a much better price point. So they, they did sell quite a few answers, I think. Not so much of these, they sold all of those CPC 464s or whatever they were, the, the little keyboard ones with a, a monitor powering them. Ones with like I think red and green and maybe blue keys on them. Because um, I know I bought a lot of uh, monitors for those just to pinch the picture tubes out of them because they were basically going to the tip. And I used to give a guy a few dollars each for them. He'd go around the garage sales and stuff and buy them up, and I just, because the tubes were always good in them, I used to pull it, and they just fitted straight into most colour TV, 34 centimetre colour TV, so I used to just buy them for a few dollars each, and just sit them in the shed, and when I needed a picture tube for either a second hand TV, or if a customer had a broken or faulty one in their sets, I'd just quote them a, a decent price to put a used one in, and so I scrapped a heap, probably 30 or something of those black coloured Amstrad monitors, the colour ones, just to get the tubes out of them. They were just a standard resolution tube. Obviously, well, this one is only monochrome, but the, the, I'm pretty sure they made a colour monitor for the, this same computer, and that would have been more like an EGA, CGA type monitor, I would think, uh, rather than just a, a colour, normal colour TV standard um, dot pitch and all the rest. But anyway, that's something a bit different to have a look inside, and I might put the word out and see if anyone actually wants any of this stuff if it's any good for parts or anything I guess I could always just unsocket the chips out of that motherboard um, those ROM chips and the microprocessor and then the rest can go in the e-waste I think and get recycled and um, yeah this monitor I might hang on to the, for, for the moment because I would like to see if I could fire that tube up on something and if it's just a green screen it's probably not worth anything if it's an amber coloured one would be interesting but I, I did look these up online, I can't remember if it said whether they were green or or what. Some of these, they did even, I think Olivetti computers in particular used to make like a white, basically a black and white screen, so they had white VGAs and stuff. This I doubt's up to v, VGA standard, be CGA or something. But some of them did use a white phosphor on, the, on their computer monitors, which was pretty rare as well. But I know Olivetti used to make white phosphored, I think they were 12-inch monitors just monochrome ones and they just plugged into a standard VGA port from memory certainly had a DB15 plug on them I used to buy some of those and sell them but there wasn't much market for for monochrome monitors, everyone wanted a colour one but they are another interesting unit, I'd love to see an old Olivetti again, they were quite a weird old computer but anyway, thanks for watching